fighters, even though they made the weight for this particular fight, they'll fight somewhere around 135 to 140. Each man will add 10 pounds. It's Richard Steele, the referee, probably best known for that questionable decision of the Chavez fight when he stopped the fight two seconds before it was over, causing Meldrick Taylor to lose. There is Jorge Paez, and that is the challenger, Troy Dorsey. Of course, in case you're unaware of the story, Paez really spent the night before their last fight in the steam room. Had no strength whatsoever. And Dorsey, who is an in-your-face boxer, was on Paez's chest all day long. Paez was embarrassed with the split decision. Dorsey says he's going to be in Paez's chest from the first bell. Well, the embarrassment also came in that he was called a coward on national television in an NBC fight. And, of course, that does not sit well with Jorge Paez. He wants his pride back. He wants his revenge. He wants to prove that he can beat Dorsey convincingly. Now, Paez, this fight with the zebra-style haircut. I would think being from Cincinnati, you would like that haircut. Yeah, it does look like the Cincinnati Bengals helmet, doesn't it? That's his hair. And there they are, right in the middle of the ring, right where Dorsey wants. He wants to prove he's got more strength than Paez. Paez, a surprise right off the bat. What's he doing there? He wanted to get some distance so he could punch. Paez, a very unorthodox fighter. He'll fire a shot from anywhere and everywhere. And he is an excellent puncher. Right now, he's tempting Dorsey to just go at it from brute strength. He's saying, all right, let's bowl a little bit. And in that battle, Dorsey will win. Dorsey, of course. There's Dorsey with good glory. Good clean shot by Dorsey. Good clean right hook followed by a left hook. Right now, Piaz is fighting a dumb fight. He's fighting just to fight the Dorsey wants. Baez has very little respect for Dorsey. He told us yesterday that no shot in their first meeting had any effect on him whatsoever. While that may be true, it changes from fight to fight. Dorsey has been training fiercely for this fight. They're both well-conditioned fighters, and right now Dorsey is doing just what he wants to do. Have Baez up against the ropes, punching short punches, and more important, smothering. Three straight uppercuts by Paez. But they're smothered. They're not punches that have the whiplash effect. Now, the weakness of Troy Dorsey, for all those who observe boxing, is that he does not have the real strength in his punches. Doesn't finish. Well, he's got... That was a good left by Paez. The point I was making a moment ago, as long as they're in close, they're smothering. Dorsey is smothering the punches. So he needs that room. There's the room that Paez needs. He needs that room to get away from him and punch effectively. As long as he's in close, he can't punch hard at Dorsey. You hear the grunts after each punch that Troy Dorsey throws. He is out of the martial arts genre of sports, owns a martial arts studio in Fort Worth, Texas, and is trying to become the first kickboxer to win a boxing title. scheduled for 12 and there's no reason for the middle of the round it's been spent all on the ropes this is the 13th round of the last fight they just continued right where they left off on that rope that's the challenger it's scheduled for 12 and it should be a war Dr. Dave Gorman is his manager right there on his left in the white hat. Casey Malone standing right in front of him. Well, they are absolutely right on the money. They're so happy with that first round. That's exactly the way they planned it, exactly the way they happened. They only want, the one thing they want them to change, aim under the heart. He said, every time he brings that left hand up, go to the heart. In Piazza's corner, they're saying, what are you doing on the ropes? Let's fight outside. Well, they get right back to the ropes. That's where Dorsey wants to be. 
It's not exactly that they get back there, it's that he's pushed back there. He is pulled back there. This guy is a guy on a training sled. He's just pushing him back to where he wants him to be. Dorsey's too strong for Paez. Paez, 24. Dorsey, 28. This is Paez's eighth title defense. Paez is doing everything he can this round to try to keep off those ropes. He wants to be out there in the middle of the ring, and he's willing to bull it with Dorsey. A contest he will lose. Dorsey is much, much the stronger man. But, Ferdy, have either one of these fighters ever heard of a jab? No, they're too close to even thinking about jabs. You know, Ferdy, it appears that Paez is trying to make a point to everyone by fighting Dorsey's fight here in these first rounds. Uh, he's Why? A, he's a perverse individual. You just don't know what this guy's thinking. Comes out do the, the, does the opposite of what it seems like he should do. This is ob obviously a continuation of the last fight. He cannot get caught in the ropes, yet he is on the ropes. He should be boxing, he should be moving, yet he's not moving. And the corner's telling him, for goodness sake, move. Good shot by Dorsey. That was a good left, just as Paez and, and Paez, no, he doesn't hurt me. Shakes it off. He's a tough customer, is Paez, and Dorsey cannot. He doesn't know how to turn over the punch uh, to be that effective, but he's there, and they're piston-like punches that build up points. Final minute of round two. It is scheduled for 12. Standing eight count here. There's no three knockdown rule. And the bell can only save the fighter after the final round. This is a 10 point must system. The winner of each round must get 10 points. And the three judges are all from Nevada Keith McDonald, Jerry Roth, and Dalby Shirley. And Ferdy, fights like this, do you agree, are difficult to judge? They're very difficult to judge because. Right now, Dorsey's building up the points, but inside, if Paez was fighting intelligently, he could neutralize it, but he hasn't fought intelligently in the first two rounds. He has not come off and done what he's got to do to win the round. So, therefore, Dorsey has taken two gifts. Final seconds, round two, and this is an exact duplicate of the first meeting between these two fighters. That's the champion with the zebra haircut, 36 and 2, 25 knockouts, and his eighth title defense against tough Troy Dorsey. Well, he's opening this round with what he should have been doing the first two, which is moving around, giving motion, letting Dorsey get frustrated coming at him and then moving away. See, Dorsey points at one section, that is the sternum, right at the mid chest bone. That's what he looks at, that's what he aims at. He says, you. He can't take that away from him. It's like a basketball player looking for a fake. He's just looking right there. And no matter what Paez does, that's the aiming point for um, Dorsey. If there's one thing that you can distinguish between the two is that Dorsey is focused. He knows exactly how he's going to fight, and he's not going to vary it one little tiny bit. That could be a tremendous advantage to Paez if he chose to use it, but he is going along with his act. He's letting him do exactly what he wants to do. Well, there's superior boxing skills by Jorge Paez, wasted, getting in there that close with Dorsey. Oh, low blow by Dorsey, very low blow. Well, I gave you a flash of what this could be like. And the anger we spoke of is in inverse proportion to what we thought of. We thought his anger would make him fight that flashy fight outside. Instead, he's gone right back to what lost him the last yes, fight. Yes. As if anger didn't have anything to do with this. And it's also similar to the last fight in that Dorsey is landing the majority of the punches. Paez has flashes, and that's why the split decision in their last meeting. Very tough on the judges. I remember, if, if, as you begin to watch this closely, watch Dorsey's punches. What do they land on? If they're landing on gloves and shoulders, they're not scoring those punches. So while it looks like he's working two or three well-placed, strong shots from Paez, like that one right there, could neutralize it.
kind of fight that Pius needs. An exchange, an exchange of cultural ideas in the corner will do a world to straighten out Dorsey. An exchange of cultural ideas between the man who likes martial arts, Troy Dorsey, and the circus acrobat in Jorge Pius. Going to the end of round three, it's scheduled for 12. And we got a lot of wasted space in this ring. Well, we're about to start round four. Fight Doctor, how do you have it scored? Unofficially, of course, Troy Dorsey's ahead, 29 to 28. Took the first two, and I gave Jorge that last one as he started to fight and punch much more effectively off the ropes. His corner now wants him to flurry on the rope and then move out. Flurry, move out. They don't want him to flurry and stay there for an exchange. What makes it such a tough... Oh, good shot. What makes it such a tough fight to score is the effectiveness of the punches and the accuracy. Paez is accurate. Dorsey's just huge quantity. Not destructive, not very effective, but a lot of punches. Dorsey is absolutely relentless. The crowd is chanting for Dorsey, and the Paez fans are trying to boot him down. Good series of punches by both men as Dorsey drives Paez reluctantly to the ropes and rope, and Paez has fought back. I can't believe that there's any kind of fight that wears a fighter out quicker than this. Not Absolutely. only the arms, but j just a body laying on you and the leg strength you need. Remember, Dorsey punches six kicks 600 times a day. That means his legs are like iron cords. He can do this. He can punch up against a guy, and the other guy has nothing close to that kind of leg strength. Another interesting aspect of Dorsey's training is Baez turns him on the ropes is that Dorsey trains against much bigger opponents when he's preparing for a fight. Well, they're both welterweights right now. So, I mean, they're both training, uh, fighting at about 135 here. There's no reason for Baez to be asleep right there. Baez, always the entertainer, Sometimes more interested in pleasing the fans than facing his opponent. And losing uh, favor with the judges. Nobody likes that in boxing. And those are the people that score. Not, not the fans, but the judges. They don't like all that playing. One thing about Jorge Baez, he is active. This is his eighth title defense in the last 15 months. And he's always fighting that 126 weight level. This time he made it rather comfortably, so he should be at full strength. That's not an excuse this time. No, this time there are no excuses. And, oh, he's got a nice head in the face, did Paez. Final seconds, round four. The official sponsor of NBC's boxing tour. Back in Las Vegas, round five. The challenger, Dorsey, on your left. The champion, Jorge Baez. At stake, Jorge Baez, IBF featherweight championship. It's scheduled for 12. Bob Trumpy along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And it has been a chest-to-chest -chest battle from the outset. I don't think they're happy in the corner of Baez. Uh, the eavesdropping on Nacho Weezer, and he is screaming. Screaming at Paez. He is blowing these rounds. Don't let him get so far ahead. Well, yeah, I gotta tell you this, so I was wondering what Paez was saying when he said that Dorsey didn't hurt him, but he does not seem to be affected by the majority of these blows that Dorsey is throwing. No, he doesn't. He has no respect whatsoever for him. And that could be bad because he takes punches he doesn't need to. He's not hurting him, but he's losing points. So therefore, he lets him punch him, but he's losing the points, and he's waiting for his effect of punching. Remember, a lot of uh, is riding on this fight. Paez is on the way to Big Bucks. He's got a shot with Tony Lopez in September if everything works out on NBC. And this fight could put a serious crimp in that right now. He's behind 39-37. And Dorsey doesn't show any signs of letting up. That's the unofficial scorecard of the fight, Doctor. Dorsey leading. 
halfway through round five. And you got to wonder what effect on the judges that last questionable decision was because it seemed so openly for Dorsey. Will they now go the other way and said, well, we got him last time. Let's kind of favor Dorsey this time. You hope judges don't think that way, but they're humans. Some of them are. And all three of these judges are from Nevada. A nice flurry by Pius. That's what he's got to do. He's got to get space, distance between them and flurry. He can't let Dorsey inside to smother him. The trouble is he's got the ropes behind him. He can't go back. He's got to wait till he pushes Dorsey back and then go after it. Well, every time Pius comes up with a flurry, it's followed by a flurry from Tro Dor Troy Dorsey. See, there, there's where he's at. That's where he needs. Now push back. Now here, here. He cannot go to sleep. When he's got him out here, he's got to take advantage. Now. Uppercuts, hooks. There's no question. These uppercuts are going to tell the difference because they're landing right on Troy Dorsey's chin. Dorsey told us yesterday that he'd been training for Pius for seven months leading up to the first fight and he's continued his training very rigorous training as we approach the end of round five hey Pius went back to his corner it really looks concerned doesn't he Bertie? well he's a better entertainer but that's not what this is about this is about who's the better boxer and he is in danger of blowing his championship as Troy Dorsey is on another streak in another rampage. He's... Baez drops his hand, comes back with a flurry of hooks. Uh, he even did an alley shuffle. That's what he's got to do. He's got to show hand speed. He's got to show flash. He cannot go back to being lazy. In the first meeting between this two, these two, there was one knockdown. Baez caught Dorsey with a good right, dropped him in the second round, but Dorsey got up, and some people think that was the difference in the fight, that one knockdown. Well, the difference in the fight is what you see right here. Dorsey knows how to put Paez on the rope, and Paez lets him. He could spin out. He could get out of there. There's no reason for him to be in there. But Paez stays. Again, I point out to you, Dorsey's strategy is to smother the punches of Paez. See, those aren't smothered. And if he gets a little distance, the uppercut hurts. But he's got to have distance in there. Blood now coming out of Dorsey's mouth. And Dorsey comes back with the flurry. Again, you're seeing a few very effective, nice shots from Paez, but then 20 or 30 big shots from uh, Dorsey. How do you score it? I score it for Dorsey because you just got to go with the busiest fighter. He's fighting his fighter. His fight. He's making him go on the ropes. He's making him get smothered and therefore Dorsey's got ring generalship and landing more punches than the other guy. You know, as close in as they are, the difficulty of the judges is that there have to be some punches they can't see because these guys are always in each other's chest or Dorsey is always on Pius's chest. There's some punches that just don't show. But when you're landing 10 or 20 punches, even if two or three go by, it's superior to the other guy who's throwing nothing. They're fighting right in Paez's corner. Paez is looking for that little uppercut that's going to stun him, that's going to chase him back. And he's, he's throwing it with a lot of power, but he needs that distance. He can't get that distance. He can't push him off. The reddest part of Jorge Paez is his back from leaning up and rubbing against those ropes. This fight is scheduled for 12. It's for the IBF Featherweight Championship. Snap to the bell. This little right hand double back to his corner, and it was after the bell. So of little things like that are fights made. Those little tiny mistakes. And he went back with blood all over his face. I think Dorsey is cut inside the mouth. This is just blue collar. This guy's just outworking him. You got a filly here. You got a racehorse that's great, but a dray horse is beating him. 
you got a guy that's willing to work, and that's what Dorsey's doing. He's blue-collaring him to death. He's not going to move either. This was his fight plan in the first fight. It will remain his fight plan throughout this fight. The amazing thing is having had so much time to study that last one, how is Paez falling right back into the same trap? Why isn't he in the middle of the corner? Why isn't he dancing and bipping and bopping? I'm sure Nacho Weezer's trying to find the answer in the corner because he's told him to get off the ropes. Watch your head, Dawson. Watch your head. There is blood on Dorsey's face underneath his eye, but it comes from his mouth. And the flurry of uppercuts by Paez. And those were things of beauty. That was speed, and that was right on the money, and that was effective. But look at how he comes back. Look how Dorsey comes back to neutralize the points that Paez built up. There's a good left hook by Paez. Caught Dorsey right on the They're going to have to stop this because of the tape. They're going to have to stop this because of the tape on Pius's hand. That Dorsey has got blood under his eye. I'm not sure that's from the mouth. He's, he is beginning to get all torn up. His face is beginning to fall apart. You see blood on the right cheek. Uh, of Dorsey. There you go. There you see it right there. Yeah, he also has a cut over his left eye, a slight cut over his left eye. Well, that, that's testament to the accuracy and speed of Pius's punches. Look at this. Both of them winging hooks. But it's Pius with advantage, big advantage for Pius. This is a fight Pius should have been fighting. All right, it is a cut underneath Dorsey's right eye. He's also cut above his left eye. Remember, we're going to 12. It's a long way to 12 when you got these cuts. Now, uh, they're going to check his eye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Richard Steele calling in the ring doctor. Now remember, this is Richard Steele. The two-second man that stopped uh, Maldrick Taylor and kept him from winning the championship with two seconds left was Julio Cesar Chavez. And I happen to think he did the right thing at that time. Did Richard Steele. Now he did the right thing again. He called a doctor in to examine it. Skip Homansky said, go ahead. 30 seconds to go. Round seven. The best action we've seen throughout the fight for both fighters. And that's vintage. Paez falling back. He, was, he managed four or five stinging uppercuts on the way back. Now that's some kind of acrobatic skill. Now this has certainly been Paez's best round of the fight. Oh, this is, this is vintage Paez. This is Paez at his best. Final seconds, round seven, scheduled for 12. It's the speed of Paez's punches as he fires off from all angles. Even when his feet aren't on the canvas, he's firing punches. And at what one streak there, he landed about four or five stinging uppercuts while he was bouncing back to the ropes. Incredible speed of acrobatic ability. Uh, you can see the cut underneath Troy Dorsey's eye now. Oh, he's got some urgency now. He's still ahead on my card, unofficially 68 to 66, but that was a big round and maybe a turning point round for Paez, depending on what happens this round. Will he let Dorsey come right back to the ropes again, or will he give him some more of that action in the middle of the ring? Baez playing right into Dorsey's hands again. Nothing is landing, but he's letting him stay there and build up points. Even his corner is now getting worried and starting to holler. Get off those ropes. But in truth, the effective punches of Paez are starting to build up and do damage on Dorsey, who is slowing up. Low punch by Dorsey. That's about the third one. Richard Steele warned Troy Dorsey after the first one. I think that's more a sign of weariness than anything else. Dorsey's getting weary and getting sloppy with the punches. They don't have much on them, and they're not landing on much but the top of uh, Piaz's head and his gloves. Remember, he's got a two-point lead quite unofficially, and we got to go all the way to 12.
delivers another low blow. Richard Steele warns Dorsey again. Well, it looks like Dorsey's corner has done a good job of at least closing the cut. The one over the left eye and the one under the right eye. And you see, those are very effective punches from Baez, but it comes after about 20 or 30 punches. But no matter how ineffective they are, they're still landing someplace by Dorsey. Watch his head. He said watch his head, but only Piaz has to watch his head because it's right in his face. And without any explanation, Piaz has taken this round off and given it back to Dorsey. Mackey comes with hard punches. And gets nailed by a right hand by Dorsey. But Piaz does not appear to be effective. Nothing hurts Piaz. Well, both these guys can take a shot. I, I don't... Fias says he does not respect the strength of Dorsey, but he's taking some shots flush on the kisser and coming back for more, and Dorsey's the same way. Hey. And the difference is that Dorsey's face is falling apart. They're working as hard as they can. And swell on one side. His eye is closing on the other side. They're trying to put in some anticoagulant to stop it. And inside the mouth, they're rinsing out. It is becoming a problem from Troy Dorsey. And they're telling him, they're telling him to let it out, let it fly, because they may have to stop this fight. And there's the doctor looking at it and saying, okay, one more. You're all right, guys. Dr. Flip Omansky in there to check both eyes. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. He doesn't have a mouthpiece. Oh, you can see how both eyes are now beginning to close on Troy Dorsey. And, of course, Ori Baez, I'm sure, notices that, too. Well, a strong showing is going to be necessary for Paez. He now cannot afford to just while away around. In the case of Troy Dorsey, though, his people, the people around him, and Troy Dorsey himself says, I'm disciplined. I will be there. You're not going to knock me out. I will be there as Paez firing from everywhere. That's what he needs. He needs those combinations. He fired off about a 20-punch combination. Five or six of those landed, but the thing is, it's awfully impressive. It's a lot better than laying on the ropes taking shots. For all of the infighting, Paez... I don't know if Paez has got blood on his eye yeah. off of Dorsey or if that's his blood. I was about to say, Paez is unmarked. There's two low blows right there. But you're right, there is blood above the eye, the left eye of Jorge Paez. Uppercut lands by Paez. And he moves away, and that's what he hasn't done. Throw a punch and moved away. He, he became lazy. And I think his overconfidence in the fact that this guy can't hurt him lets him take too many punches. It would have been much better if he'd have been scared of this guy's punch and moved around a little bit. Checking the eye of Jorge Baez, that blood is from Dorsey. That is not, there is not a cut over Baez's eye. Again, Baez content to stay on the ropes, which certainly gives Troy Dorsey every opportunity to steal around. Richard Steele encouraging the fighters to punch and get out. Exactly the same thing that Pius is going to sell them. Twenty seconds left in round nine. It's scheduled for twelve. This is for the IBF. Featherweight Championship. The belt is owned by Jorge Baez. This is his eighth title defense against tough Troy Dorsey, the kickboxer. Trying to become the first kickboxer to win a boxing title. A look at the cut. A little look at the cut off of the left brow of um, 
Tires fixed uh, expertly and, at, uh, for a moment by Chuck Bodak. But now both of them have cuts and both things to worry about. And the doctor once again came in the corner of Troy Dorsey. Dr. Flip Omansky had another check of the two cuts that Dorsey has. And both fighters have been cleared. Round 10. If he's sending a bill for each one of those, he's going to build up a half a medical <laughs> bill at the end of this. Making a lot of house calls here. I repeat, this is a very important fight. Not only is it a title fight, but very important for the uh, for Jorge Baez, who hopes to go in and take Tony Lopez, go up and wait and take another title, and then eventually face Pernell Whitaker. Well, if he doesn't get by this one, he may not be going anywhere. Bertie, how do you have the fight score? I've got so Dorsey ahead, 87-85. That's the unofficial scorecard. But again, it's going to be a close decision. The judges are going to be in the same spot they were the last time these two fighters met. And I have to feel at this time they may favor Dorsey. I mean, the last time was such an obvious misjudgment that I got to figure they're looking at much, much closer at the hard work that Troy Dorsey is doing. Remember, they're not the same judges, but they have uh, seen the fight and they know it's the same commission, the Las Vegas Commission, and they are well instructed by Chuck Minker. And so therefore, Let's see what they come up with. Baez cut over the left eye. It's a small cut. Dorsey cut over the left eye and underneath the right eye and also bleeding from the mouth. appears to need these last three rounds. He cannot afford to do this for the rest of this round because he's going to lose it. Good. Four good solid hooks landed by Piles. Triggered off four beautiful shots. He needs to do more of that. He should have been doing more of that. Because now he's punching with authority, speed, and accuracy. I would like to say one thing. If, if uh, pa Piles doesn't respect the punching power of Dorsey, I think the same thing is happening the other way. I think Dorsey doesn't care if he gets hit. He's just coming in. Baez again with a big flurry. A good right hurt, Dorsey. Dorsey getting hurt by those punches. His face is a mask of blood. It now becomes a medical decision. It may not need judges. They may need just a doctor to decide this fight. going on over there. Everybody's working on a different part of the face and Skip Momansky one more says, okay, you guys are taking care of it. It is a title fight. They aren't that bad. The inswell is working and so is the anticoagulant. Let them go. But both of those eyes are closing and closing quickly. Now the, the cut underneath his right eye is no bother, but he also has a cut above his left eye. And right on the eyelid. And both eyes are closing is, is the problem. Now the problem is squarely in Jorge Paez's lap. If he doesn't win these last two, he's got a chance of losing the title. There he goes back to the ropes. Almost unconsciously, he goes back to the ropes. It's almost as if he doesn't wait anymore for Dorsey to push him back there. He just goes back till he feels the ropes, says Paez. All of that miss. All of that miss from Dorsey. trying to sucker punch him, trying to punch light, and then all of a sudden, come in with something heavy. Right here, he should trigger something off. He did, but it missed. Tried the left uppercut. It, it, was, it was wild. You see the way Dorsey's bending over to push him? That's a sucker for an uppercut. That's why he should push back, push him back, let him come in leaning over, and land that hard uppercut. Good shot. Baez had Dorsey on the ropes there, which is unusual for this fight. Good shot. There's another one. Just when you think Piaz is getting untracked and lands beautiful punches, he stops fighting. There you go. Big point builders. Richard Steele telling Troy Dorsey, don't push, don't push. He's been pushing for <laughs> ten and a half rounds. What was he waiting for? They're out in the middle of the ring where Piaz wants them. Look at this. Dorsey's 
got to be it, it, it just in a start now where he, he must be having trouble seeing Paez, and he's getting dizzy. All those punches and that moving round and round is getting him dizzy. He's not reacting when there's nothing on the punches of Dorsey. Absolutely. Oh, Dorsey's hurt. Dorsey's legs buckled with that one. He no longer has the strength that he had in the opening rounds. But he pushes him back up against the rope and starts firing again. Heart, he's got. Guts, he's got. The man is a non-stop punching machine, but the machine is running out of gas. Right now, Dorsey's punching like a man in desperation, like if he was behind and trying to get ahead instead of being the man that's ahead. Of course, in this place, you never know whether you're behind or ahead. Fires again, clowning. Three quick hooks, left hooks. Let's go. Again, the glove, the tape on the glove. Photographer's having a field day on the face of Troy Dorsey, who is looking battered and bruised. Looks like the man that's losing this fight instead of the man that's ahead, at least unofficially ahead. Here comes Fires back to the attack. The end of round 11. The eye of Dorsey has gotten no worse. Twelfth and final round. That's Troy Dorsey, the challenger. Paez, the champion. Bertie, how do you have your unofficial scorecard? Well, I got it dead even. And I think a good performance by either fighter is going to determine the outcome here. Right. By a great surprise, Paez went right back to the ropes when he should be in the middle trying to win, win this round big. He I needs would, it big. I would certainly think that Dorsey would be even closer to him, smother him even more in this final round. In case you just tuned in, you haven't missed anything because this is exactly the way these two guys have fought for 11 rounds. Chest to chest, up against the ropes, which has been Troy Dorsey's game plan. Yep, it's Troy Dorsey's willpower against Piazza's skill. None of that is landing. Richard Steele separates him. Piazza tried to stick his left out there to measure Dorsey. Steele would have nothing of it. The closer you watch this, the more you realize Dorsey has nothing left. He's just fighting on absolute pure courage. His legs aren't responding the way he wants. He's the man that's taken the beating, not Paez, even though it looks the other way around. Paez is relatively fresh from all this. Paez landed a very good punch on Dorsey, and Dorsey was unaffected. And it's right back to the ropes. Uppercut misses by Paez. But the second one landed. There's another couple that landed. He's triggering off punches now that are hurting Dorsey. Still right on top of the fighters, not letting them bump heads, but they are. They're bumping heads inside the last minute of this fight. And it comes down to this minute. As it so often happens, it comes down to this minute. Myers got himself a little punching room, and the hooks landed. This is exactly the way the last fight ended. In the corner, hammering on each other. What courage. The uppercuts of Paez are devastating. It's amazing what's holding Dorsey up. He's punching, but he's hitting arms. But Paez is landing some crunching uppercuts. and it's going once again to the scorecards. The judges have a very difficult decision. Both fights go the distance. And it'll be controversial again no matter who wins. Again it goes 12. 
The face of Troy Dorsey is a mess. It looks like he has two cuts underneath his right eye. And both of his eyes are closed in the final seconds of the 12th round. Just as their first fight ended, hammering away at each other in the corner. Dorsey thinks he's won this fight, and he thought he'd won the first fight. A very controversial split decision went in favor of Paez. And there's the champion. Dorsey certainly dictated the tempo of the fight and also the manner in which the fight was fought. And we go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 championship rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Again. Judge at ringside, Dolby Shirley. Scores about 116, 112, Troy Dorsey. <laughs> Judge Jerry Roth scores about 115, 113, Jorge Paez.